Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we're going to be doing the second part What if Goku was the legendary Super Saiyan? I just want to thank all of you for the support on the first part, it did really well. At the end of the day, the community post poll to decide my next Dragon Ball What If was a mass majority for this What If, so I know that you guys will really like it. Please like this video for the algorithm and tell me something that you liked about the video once you finish watching it. There's nothing much I also want to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into Look, the video. Look at the way that I move, swear, disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Gohan stares at his opponent with glaring blue eyes. His aura erupts and glows with pure silver. While looking up, his aura starts to become unstable and light up. His short hair raises slightly and his muscles enlarge. In one powerful roar, his true power is released and his hair switches to a glistening gold. His new aura is immense and fierce. His cold blue eyes also strike fear right into Dr. Jiro's artificial heart. Everyone actually feels that his power is similar to that of Goku's, which is surprising yet not at the same time. He is his son, after all. Gohan flies right to Dr. Jerome, clashes forearms with him. The cybernetic android slides back and digs his feet into the ground to try and stay sturdy. However, it is useless and he is simply blasted away. Gohan throws in a close-up key blast and throws out a one-hand energy wave. This forces Dr. Jiro airborne and also several meters away. Gohan then beams into the air and punches Jiro's chin so hard that it crushes into his upper head parts. In one final combo, Gohan throws a left hook, swivel throws Jiro down to the ground and shouts Super Masenko as he launches down the energetic but also highly destructive blast down towards him. The group see the blast coming and readily fly right out of the way to evade its damages. The blast connects with the ground and literally forms an explosion so large that it seems larger than even a nuclear bomb. Dr. Jiro is completely destroyed and taken care of. Gohan falls right out of Super Saiyan but it isn't as taxing on his body. To be honest, he's pretty much fine. The group believe they have beat the androids and rejoice together. Piccolo simply flies off to continue training with Mr. Popo and the rest just begin to leave to their own places. However, Future Trunks arrives and says, did you get them? Gohan nods and points to both the metal corpses, kinda. These aren't the androids, he shouts, before turning it down near the end to stop being awkward and weird. The androids I know are two, one blonde girl and a black haired boy. They might even be designed to be siblings by how similar they look. Krillin shakes his shiny, bold head before just saying, um, we didn't see any androids like that. They look kinda human, but they were definitely not identical to humans at all. Trunks just grunts in annoyance and says, well, we have to look for them, let's go searching for them. The old android looked in exactly that direction before he wanted to fly there. We should focus our attention to that thick collection of rocks over there. Vegeta smartly deduces. Goku is taken home by Yamcha and the rest fly in that direction in search for the androids. Everyone lags behind while Vegeta shows off his Super Saiyan form and races ahead of the rest. He swiftly flows through the dips and gaps, trying to look for the androids. Everyone wants to find them to destroy them, but Vegeta has a different plan. After a good 30 minutes of searching, the lab is found. It's quite secretive and small, almost blending into the surroundings. The only thing to tell that it's a lab is a random silver wall located in the midst of orange stone. They all land and Vegeta soon arrives too. Trunks turns into a Super Saiyan and raises his arm. Let's blow this place to smithereens. I've had a change of plans, boy, Vegeta declares, turning back to the group. He drops spontaneously but strikes up into Trunks' stomach and his hair falls back, reverting to its normal purple. Gohan, who is quite scared of Vegeta due to his demeanour, stumbles forward and tries to stop Vegeta. Stop this, he pleads. Vegeta swats him like a fly through a rock pile and releases a wave of key blasts that force the Z fighters to evade and escape. The surrounding rocks shatter and fall from the sky like rain, leaving thin trails of smoke behind them. Vegeta places his palm on the door and it blasts off with a single push. Once he starts searching through the advanced lab, he stumbles upon a large device. Approaching the chamber, he sees a black square that he places such device on. Both chambers open and the androids are activated. Their eyes blast open as they stare at Vegeta. Still in the Super Saiyan form, he says, Listen, pieces of scraps, I activated you for a worthy battle, so let's fight to the death. 18 chuckles while looking back at 17 before saying, so be it Vegeta. She emphasises the Vegeta part and seriously surprises him. In one punch, the Super Saiyan is sent flying right out of the lab and 17 fires out a few key blasts of his own. Vegeta uses all of his speed to try and dodge these attacks coming for him, but he gets chipped by one. Whilst he violently spins, he is slammed to the ground by 18. He soars through the gaps in the rock and gets completely blasted through one tall tower of rock. 18 and 17 then collectively shoot down an energy wave that combines and amplifies greatly in its destructive capabilities. As the energy wave hurls down and destroys anything in its path, Vegeta charges up his big bang attack. Once the beam of ki is in close proximity, Vegeta flies back powerfully while the blast is launched. Both attacks connect and release heaps of violent ki and power. Vegeta is left moderately injured, but the two androids are better than ever. 
No, I won't stand for this. Two pieces of junk can't defeat the prince of all Saiyans. The Super Saiyan, he mutters to himself, trembling against these fighters. Vegeta screams and releases his aura while racing directly towards 18. They clash, but he gets flipped right over and lead in the stomach. She then unleashes several powerful punches that break him apart completely. Every hit leaves him with a large bruise or snaps a bone entirely. It slowly knocks him down and then his arm is crushed by a swinging kick. He flips and swings around from the hit before being crushed by the knees of 17. They both fly down to the ground and he is kept planted beneath his knees. Seeing the ground incoming, the same prince tries ever so hard to let go from this android's tight grasp. However, it is useless. In seconds, he is slammed into the ground and as this happens, he lets out a very violent and blood curdling scream. He falls out of Super Saiyan and is just left completely broken. The prince of all Saiyans has been broken down to this level. Seventeen raises his hand and says, You were a fighter, Vegeta, but you aren't stronger than us androids. The key blast grows in his open palm and he says this and Vegeta's eyes slowly begin to shut. He can barely move and these people who are more than 50 times stronger than him right now are keeping him locked in. However, a key blast comes soaring in and slams into Seventeen. Leave him alone, Gohan shouts as he flies from the sky. Trunks and Piccolo follow, with Trunks leaving his golden trail behind him. Gohan slams into Seventeen but gets punched in the gut and swatted. Both Trunks and Piccolo interrogate Eighteen and Trunks swings down the sword, literally cracking open a large crevice in the ground with a strike. Piccolo punches Eighteen in the face but she simply moves back against the hit. Speedily she pushes off his feet then launches a key blast into his body before punching him back. While turning back, she grabs Trunks' sword and breaks it with ease. Finishing off, she punches him in the face, knees him in the chest and elbows him away. Saying, stand back, I think I have enough power to defeat them, Piccolo claims, while taking off his weighted clothing. Gohan blocks two incoming punches before swinging Seventeen away and shooting a point-blank at Super Masenko. This attack engulfs the android and hurls him into the sky, giving him minor bruises and burns to his clothes. What do you mean? Kaioken times five, he shouts, erupting in a red aura. As of now, Piccolo is about 80% the strength of Vegeta, so around equal to canon Super Saiyan Vegeta. With Karaken times 5, he's 5 times stronger than him and more than enough to handle the androids. Piccolo punches 17 and his fist literally goes right through him. To finish, he uppercuts him into the sky and throws up two powerful key blasts. He blurs upwards, leaving a red trail of key, then grabs 17's arm. With a powerful spin, he throws down the android and he pummels 18 after slamming into her. Kaioken like grenade, a golden ball of energy grows in his palms and he shouts, keep them occupied and run when I say. The clouds above collect together and darken, lightning strikes next to the fighters and they begin the battle. With 17 pretty much out of commission, 18 has to fight both Saiyans. Gohan and Trunks both form their signature attacks and the irrational android simply flies right out the two. They both say their attacks but once they hear each other's attack they simultaneously shout, super burning Masenko. The orange-yellow beam hurls at 18 and slams into her powerfully. She is forced to catch the large orange ball of energy ahead of herself to stop getting seriously injured. And to be honest, it's all she can do to stop getting overwhelmed and potentially destroyed. Move! Both Gohan and Trunk zoom away and grab Vegeta in the process. The light grenade is hurled down from Piccolo's steaming palms and 18, who is moderately injured from the same signature attack combo, gets engulfed in the powerful explosion and the entire area is covered by the bright light of the light grenade. Both androids are caught in the explosion and destroyed once it hits the ground. Once the ground is revealed, there's a deep and crackling crater with steam emitting off of its surface. Piccolo falls out of Kaioken and actually seems quite okay. Gohan and Trunks arrive back with a now healed Vegeta. His body is healed but his clothes are still torn and dirty. What was that trick you pulled Namekian, he asks, annoyed from the fact that he has displayed superior strength to his own. It's called Kaioken, you've seen it before, Vegeta, he claims, not paying much attention to Vegeta's breaking ego. Once Piccolo lands on the floor, he feels a decrease in life force from a city in the distance. I must go. Piccolo mutters before blasting away into the distance. He eventually arrives at Jinja Town and takes a quick glance from an aerial view. As of now, nothing too suspicious seems to be happening. It's just a decrease in life force, but once he pinpoints it, he can see a weird green dot walking through the streets of the city. Once he arrives on the ground of the city, Cell faces him directly. A Piccolo, he states jokingly, wafting around his lizard-like tail. How do you know my name? Piccolo asks demandingly, preparing for battle. Well, I'm the life form that's reduced these beams to nothing but cloth across the entire city. Who else? This ticks off Piccolo and he goes right into Kaioken. After this, he zooms towards Cell and punches him away. While he slides back, he throws up a key blast and launches a one-hand energy wave. Cell manages to knock the one key blast away with a backhand that gets slammed into by the energy. It causes some damage, but he's able to spin right out of the way and prevent extensive damage. However, he gets impaled in the chest by the special beam cannon. Piccolo swings up and flies towards Cell with a left uppercut. He strikes him away with a right elbow, then punch, but then gets punched with the same arm. 
to finish off, Piccolo kicks him away with a side kick and cracks one of his ribs. Cell stumbles back from the literal hole in his chest and tries to hold the wound closed. While doing so, his open wound fills with healthy flesh and blood. Cell notices the urgency of the situation and tries to leave immediately. Solar flare, he shouts as Piccolo is blinded by the attack. Cell takes to the skies and flies away as fast as he possibly can. Piccolo, left stunned, falls out of Kaioken and just falls to a knee. The flare felt as if his eyes were being poked by red hot metal rods. Luckily, he is strong enough to combat Cell and he has no androids to try and absorb. At least that's what he thinks. Cell sees Gohan and Trunks flying in the distance but notices that they are in their base forms. Once he gets close enough, he grabs both of them simultaneously and launches them down to the ground with just pushing force alone. To finish, he uses powerful beams of energy before leaving into the clouds and distance. Both Saiyans fall right after the powerful hit and have their clothes slowly rustle as they drop. Vegeta just lands ahead both of them and is disgusted. How were they able to fall apart so easily? What even was that green thing flying in the sky? Vegeta has so many questions but has something more important on his mind. He has to surpass his limits. To achieve this, he reaches in and Trunks thinks he will help both of them, but he grabs his arm and flies off into the distance. Trunks, while dangling by just his arm, asks, where are we going? With his purple hair flowing under pressure and air. Vegeta flies in the Super Saiyan form to increase his speed and doesn't reply for a few good seconds. He doesn't even let his eyes off of what's ahead of him. We're training to surpass that Namekian, he shouts, arriving at Kami's lookout after passing Corrin's tower. They both arrive there, Mr. Popo reluctantly lets him go in. He understands the motive, but he can almost sense the evil from Vegeta's demeanour. He seems dark and evil like a murderer, however Trunks is much more bubbly and likeable, so it helps in getting them both into the chamber. The Saiyans and fighters group up at the same lookout to see how to combat the new threat. However, this is possibly the worst thing that he can do. While they are atop the lookout, Cell is searching for the androids and finds their metal remains on the ground. Through the remains, he sees two large cells that are still active. These are their infinite power cores, with both in his hand he laughs maniacally and never thought his task would be this easy. He simply absorbs these cores and releases masses of large waves of energy. Dark clouds cover the sky above him and lightning strikes directly next to him. His body clicks in a fortified shield and his body starts to drastically change. After a few more seconds of transformation, he fully transforms into his perfect cell form. His aura is rich and powerful, emitting waves of pressure and key. As the transformation finishes, Piccolo and the group sense a humongous key signature from below. Piccolo senses it the strongest and is clearly concerned. Is that Cell? There's no way he could have got that strong of just absorbing humans. His power jumped in seconds alone. How did he get so powerful? Goku replies in shock. Both Piccolo and Goku stand forward as they prepare to face a powerful fighter. They are the strongest of the Z-Warriors, and with Piccolo's Kaioken times 20, he can output power that far surpasses even Goku's. However, Goku in his legendary Super Saiyan form is something else. They just have to hope that Goku can pull the form off after being healed by Trunks in his medicine. He has tried to ascend to the legendary Super Saiyan form before this encounter, but he could just never pull it off. It's just due to the fact that he feels a little off from being healed from the medicine after getting the heart virus. They both blast off the lookout and both Vegeta and Trunks train hard to overcome their limits. Goku and Piccolo land in front of the large green monster and prepare for battle. Goku makes his battle stance and says I'll go first, while slightly pointing his head in the direction of Piccolo. Hello Namekian, Cell states, raising two fingers and using his own attack against him. He immediately gets stabbed by the powerful beam and falls lifelessly to the ground. Goku quickly heals him with a sensu beam and powers up into his Super Saiyan form. You'll pay for that, Goku shouts, soaring across the battlefield to then bash into Cell. He blocks and doesn't even budge in the slightest. He throws another punch but Cell swerves and attacks with a perfect kick. He goes flying back but slams his palms into the tough rock below to slow his speed. Piccolo now completely healed is fearful of this beam's power. He looks so much different to when he saw him, he seems stronger, more perfect. Don't take me for some regular old fighter saying I'm much stronger than you can imagine. So that will conclude the second part of what if Goku was a legendary Super Saiyan. This part was really fun to make and I can't wait for you guys to see what I've got in store for you for the Dragon Ball Super parts to this what if. I have finished Dragon Ball Super, so this what if is going to go till the last chapter of Dragon Ball Super that is out right now. I believe that's the arc with Granola and Gas. I'm not going to reveal any further details to not give you guys any spoilers. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.